A new HomeKit compatible wall switch from Akara, up next. Welcome and thanks for watching. If you are new to the channel or maybe you haven't done so yet, please do me a huge favor and mash that subscribe button and tap the bell to get notified when I post new content. And if you find the following video useful, please give it a thumbs up. So today we're gonna take a look at a brand new smart wall switch from Akara. And if you follow my channel, you know that I've covered the Akara system in the past. And one thing that's great about Akara is that they offer HomeKit compatible smart home devices for a very reasonable price. And they just seem to keep churning them out, which is great because it gives us consumers great choices. And let's go ahead and get to it and start with an unboxing. So here we have the smart wall switch from Akara. Uh, this one needs a neutral wire. Uh, Akara tells me they have two versions, one that needs a neutral wire and one that doesn't. Um, since my home is equipped with neutral wires and all the switch boxes, I decided to pick the one with the neutral wire. And the bottom says it requires the Akara hub. That side of the box says energy monitoring, smart automation and overload and overheat protection. Um, it shows that it works with Google Assistant works with Alexa and it doesn't mention HomeKit, but on the bottom it does say to work with Amazon Alexa, Google Assistant or Apple HomeKit and the Akara Hub is required as it did in the front of the box. And here's the box for the Akara Hub and the hubs itself says it works with Apple HomeKit. If you'd like to see an unboxing of this hub and the setup of the Akara system, I'll go ahead and link a video down in the description. Uh, back of the box. Just a beauty shot of the switch and the side shows remote control, voice control, set schedules, and it's Zigbee certified. So let's go ahead and open this up. We have some literature, Akara smart wall switch with neutral and double rocker, and some wire labels for to ease with installation if you need those. First the plate, the front plate for the switch. This is the switch itself. Has the wiring on the back, all the wiring's there. The back says a car smart wall switch with neutral wire, and that's the white wire. Pretty simple design actually. Pretty straightforward. Um, I actually kind of Reach over, grab the faceplate. That's a that's a really clean. I like the nice clean design. Let's go ahead and set this aside. What else is in the box? So that's cool. They add the wire nuts and the screws. Okay. So the mounting screws for the front plate and for the switch itself. If you watch my channel, you've seen me do a ton of light switch installs, and I'm looking forward to installing this and see how it works. Let's go ahead and install this right now. So we're gonna install the Akara Smart Wall Switch in the garage actually. Right now the only kind of automated lights we have are, or rather is the light that's attached to the garage door opener there. And we do have overhead lights in this garage and they are controlled by this light switch here. So as with any installation that involves electricity, you wanna make sure that you turn off power to the switches you're working on at the breaker box, which I've already done. And the only thing you're gonna need for this is a screwdriver, with a flat head and a Phillips head bit. So we'll start by taking out the old switch. So here is the original switch with the original wiring. So I'd like to confirm which one's the line wire or the live wire. So I'm gonna go ahead and snip these wires off. And then I'll turn on, I'll turn the power back on. Before I turn the power back on, I'm gonna go ahead and clean these wires up a little bit. Make sure the wires aren't touching and then let's go ahead and turn that power back on. So power's back on and we're gonna go ahead and test which one is the live wire with this tester. And it looks like it's the, the bottom one here. And yeah, 
So top is a load, bottom is a line live wire. Now that we've confirmed that, I'm gonna go back and turn the power off again. So power's back off and I can confirm by testing the wires again. So this bottom one was the line live wire, so I'm going to go ahead and pull the tape off of this top one and leave that on there so that I know that this is the live wire. So I'm gonna pull all the wires out of the outlet box. This is the neutral wire bundle and here is the ground. Bare copper is always the ground. And we'll be using the supplied wire nuts that a card put in the box. So let's go ahead and wire this. The green is the ground. White is neutral. The black is the line wire. And they have a marked L1 and L2 for load one and load two. Not sure if I can, let me see if I can focus in on that. You can see the wiring, the labels on the switch itself. Neutral, L, L1 and L2. So line wire is the black, and then there's two load wires. So let's go ahead and wire this up. Green is easiest. It is the ground. We'll start with that. Then the neutral wire, the white wire. I'll just undo this bundle and add it to this. Make sure that's on there really tight. And I'll even tug on the wire to make sure it's not gonna come loose. And that's good on there tight. Then this was the line live wire. We'll connect that to black. Again, give that a tug. And then the load wires will connect to this remaining wire here. Now the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and push the wires all back into the, the switch box very gently. Try to get them all the way back in there. It's gonna be a tight fit, but it should all fit back in there. And then I'm gonna take the screws that Kara included in the box that I'm going to mount this, but I'm going to mount it lightly and turn the power back on. I just want to make sure all the wiring is correct and everything works before I mount everything down more permanently. So here are the screws that the car included. So that's installed there lightly. I'm gonna go ahead and turn the power back on and make sure everything works before I permanently mount this with the front face plate. So power is back on at the breaker box and confirm that the lights work. The lights work fine. So I'm gonna go ahead and mount everything permanently and tighten all the screws and get the face plate on there. So one thing is this seems to be made of all plastic, so you want to be careful and not over tighten. So that's what we're going to do is we're going to get the face plate on there and it is actually made of two pieces. So we want to remove this piece. There's a tab on the bottom. So we want to attach this first using the included screws. And lastly, all we need to do is pop the front faceplate on there. Make sure this notch here aligns with the tab and the tab I have in the bottom. So it'll be easier for you to remove this at a later time. There it is. Really nice, clean design. So let's go ahead and run through setup. So we're gonna go ahead and run through setup. What I'm gonna need to do is we're gonna have to open up the Akara app. And in the upper right, we're gonna hit the plus sign. Then we're gonna go look for plug-in switch on the side. 
and scroll down till we see the switch that we want. So this is a smart wall switch and this is the D1 with neutral. Um, in the app right now that I'm using, it doesn't really show up. It doesn't look the same. This is for the, the photos here don't match because this is for the US market. But we'll go ahead and pick that because we know that that's what it is, the smart wall switch D1 neutral. We're going to choose this a car hub and then I'm going to listen out my car hubs in down the hallway in the family room. It did let me know that it's ready for setup. So I'm going to follow the instructions here and long press the button for more than eight seconds until the blue light blinks quickly. And there it is. Child device connected. And I don't know if you could hear that all the way over here, but it did say child device connected at my hub. And if we go back, we should see the switch here. And they are listed at the bottom 38B1, 38B1. And I can use the, these in the native Akara app to turn the lights on and off. Let's go ahead and see what that looks like in the home app. And they should be at the bottom. And here right now, they here they are. It is listed as a family room wall switch. So I'm gonna long press, and there are two switches here. If I had, I believe, if this was uh, two switches, I would have um, attached that second wire, that second load wire to the other switch, the existing switch, and it would control both switches. So there it is in HomeKit. Let's go ahead and rename this to Garage Wall Switch. And it is in the garage. Click Done. There are two accessories again. It shows two switches. It was a double rocker. But since this only has a single switch in this garage, um, I hooked them both up to the single light. And there it is in HomeKit. Turn the switch on, turn it off. So if you notice each of these wall switches is named differently. So what I can do is I can show these as separate tiles. I'm gonna go ahead and hide this one from favorites. We have the single switch left on here now. I'm gonna go ahead and name this to overhead light. Then I'm gonna place this in the garage, which it already is, I'll leave that in favorites. And then I'm gonna hit done. And we're gonna close that. And it will control light switch from the home app. And then we can even ask Siri, turn on the overhead light in the garage. Okay, the overhead light is on. Turn off the overhead light in the garage. Okay. The overhead light is off. And there is the Akara double rocker wall switch. So I'm gonna go back into the home app and under HomeKit, I wanna create a new automation for this light. So I'm gonna hit the plus sign and then I'm going to choose an accessory is controlled. I'll scroll down until I see the garage. There it is. I'm gonna click the door, hit next. And I want this automation to happen when the garage door opens only at night and people I'll leave default, then I'll choose next. And I want it to control the overhead light. So now I'm gonna choose overhead light, gonna hit next, and I want it to turn on when the garage door opens at night. Cause sometimes when we come back home, the light that's in the garage door opener isn't bright enough. And I like it to be a little brighter when we return home. And I'm gonna to wanna to turn that off, let's say after about 10 minutes. And we're gonna click done. And there's the automation and it's completed. And if we scroll down, oh, there it is. When the garage door opens, the overhead light turns on and then it will turn off after 10 minutes. 
So that is a simple automation so that when we arrive home at night, the garage light turns on and brightens the garage. So there you have the smart wall switch from Acara. Uh, and I've installed dozens of these smart uh, wall switches throughout my house. And this one is much the same, straightforward install and simple setup. One thing to note is you will need a Acara hub if you wanna get this switch into HomeKit and create automations for this switch. So this switch is in fact a double rocker. So that's two switches contained in the form factor of a single switch. Uh, my installation today didn't fully take advantage of that functionality because the light switch I happened to be swapping out in the garage only controlled one set of lights. Uh, I'd imagine you could use this in say the restroom and have the top button control the lights and the bottom button control a ceiling ventilation fan. Um, I didn't take, undertake that kind of uh, installation today because all my switches in the restroom are two gang. So I need a front face plate with a blank on one side and a opening for a switch on the other side, or I'd have to do some light drywall work. But that is certainly a possibility for a future weekend DIY project. Um, so that's gonna do it for this video. And until the next one, please take care and be safe out there.